Hello dear friends, here in the Caucasus Mountains the third round is starting and I, Grandmaster Sergei Shipov, is commenting the game of the leader Levon Aranyan and Sergei Karakin, who is also counted as a favorite after his success at Chorus this year. A principally important meaning. Can Karakin stop Aranyan's 100% performance? Can he win? The result of the whole tournament is dependent on the answers to these questions. We'll see. The Rai Lopez. Sergei is declining the opponent's offer to trade the knowledge in the martial variation. Looks like black has the last word in the theory. With the black pawn on b5, the trade on d4 can lead to be fatal for the b3 bishop with the push of the pawn c7, c5, c4. But with the addition of the moves a2, a4 and b5, b4, the situation becomes advantageous for white. Which is why black decides to hold on to the center. In this structure, white has a minimal advantage because of the pressure on the light squares. White pieces are aiming at c4. Black is strengthening the pawn e5, freeing up the knight on c6 for the jump to a5. He is not afraid of the white knight's jump to g5. As I understand, it's not a big surprise. An important positional nuance. White not only got re rid of the threat, uh, knight a5, but also fixated the weakness on a6. The bishop from c4 can pressure it, and in the far future, the knight on c5 can help as well. Here, to the move knight g5, black could answer rook d7. So then to move the bishop to b7 and then centralize the queen side rook. But a5 was played, and he still takes away the square g5 from white pieces. The plan regroup, the pawn a6 is attacked, and the square b3 is free for the knight. It looks like Aranyan is well prepared in the opening. He is quickly making the prepared moves. The black king is moving to e7, which isn't risky without the queens. A novelty. Judging by the speed with which it was made and the results of the computer programs, Karakin spent this morning usefully. His past thinking was, in a way, a tactical move. He is moving down the home prepared path. Instead of the standard move of the knight to b3, Sergei is uh, preparing the move of the bishop to b2. Looks like he's planning to really pressure the pawn e5. We also shouldn't forget about the fact that white has the resource bishop d5. It will be especially strong if the black king will end up on e7, if of course being the key word. Hmm, the mon is demonstrating surprising calmness which is almost border borderline with disregard to the opponent. Does he really not see white's threats? No, that can't be. Then he must think they are dangerous. Well, we'll see. Let's sh let him show what his defensive resources are. A logical, foreseeable answer. White is ready for the trade on d5, so in that case the rook on e1 can say a few kind words to the black king, so to say. I might spawn out that white got a possibility to move the knight to c4, strengthening the pressure on the condemned pawn. Arnon is thinking. That's not a good sign. For now, Karakin has an hour and 31 minutes remaining. Aranyan has an hour and 38 minutes. Forward, toward the dangers. And has to retreat. Here, in the case of the move knight d4, knight takes d4, the pinned pawn e5 could get revenge for the fallen knight. Knight a7. The execution happened. The black knight is under attack. And now it's time to run. Black didn't just lose a pawn, but he also has to run from the center. What did he get for it? I guess we don't have to talk about the advantage of two bishops. But the weakness on the, of the pawn z5 might play its role. If it will be possible to win it back, though. But for now, it's white to move. He has time to finish development and organization of the later breakthrough. For example, he can take care of the pawn b4. No, I really don't believe in black's counterplay. White clearly will have the advantage. Simple and strong. After the trade of the bishop d6, we could also, so to say, meet the pawn b4. 
Our Nyan didn't wait for the trade on g6 and the later pressure on it. His biggest goal is to take the pawn on g5. Kraken has a difficult choice. What to capture with on e5? Taken with the rook leads to difficult and uncertain variations. But in analysis, it leads to white's big advantage. And capturing with the knight will lead to full equality. The third choice is such. To risk or not to risk? There's still enough time to think about that. Karakin has an hour and 8 minutes. Aryan has an hour and 23 minutes remaining. Exactly. He who doesn't risk will die from thirst. An effective return of the scent of knight. His capture will lead to mate on the first row. A good answer. With the tempo sacrifice of the bishop, white controls the first row. Now it's possible to take the knight on c6. One way or another, white keeps the extra pawn. Also, the pawn on c6 has a lot of potential, and in some variations that potential might show. An interesting configuration of pieces, but a strong one. A simple developmental move. Black is planning to trade or push away the knight from c4, so then to enter with rooks on the second row. But I'm a little suspicious that the white knight can go to the b6 all on his own, right now. Exactly. And we have to bear the hooligan. Here, after the move, c takes b6, a takes b6, black can't take care of the powerful white passed pawn. Returning the pawn, white got new possibilities. On the queen's side, black has too many weaknesses. He can only be saved by active counterplay. I'm not sure that's the correct order of moves. Here, rook d2 looked tempting so that after rook takes c7, rook e8, we can act like a host with rooks on the second row. But rook b5. An important achievement. The pawn a5 became a real candidate for a queen. The pawn c2 is not so important in this position that it will compensate for black's losses. Freeing up the path of a soldier which will soon become a general, if he is lucky that is. A natural move, but looks like not the best one. Here the move king e7 should have been looked at, but king f7. An opening was necessary. Now, without any doubts, we can push the pawn into queens. Two steps until the goal. So, black rooks got to the second row, but the path b8, b5, c5, c2 is a tempo longer than b8, e8, e2. This last tempo could be everything for black. The only move that promises the perspectives for a win. The capture of the pawn f2, white will meet with the blow on c5, with beneficial for him trade of the rooks. Today is obviously not Aranyan's day. His last chance here was to play rook a2 and rook takes a2, rook takes a2, rook takes c7, check, king a6, only like that, a7, g6. And black continues to oppose. It looks like everything is lost, but practical chances were still there. But instead, c6. The bet on the perpetual check won't work. The white king hides from the checks on h1. Here, black resigns. I don't know how to explain the Armenian grandmaster's play. After the novelty on move 15, b3, it was like he changed. After using a number of the opponent's mistakes, Karakin surprisingly easily and quickly increased his tiny advantage until the win. For you again was working Grandmaster Sinkishipov. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll see you again very soon.